What's up folks? Merry Christmas. Jorge Anito here. Thanks for coming over and welcome back to our playlist, our Christmas project, How the Devil Tried to Steal Christmas. This is the third installment, Genealogies, Jesus's Unsavory Family Tree. You know, if you're like me, every once in a while you'll bust out the old family albums and go through with your loved ones and um, enjoy the memories of the pictures that you're looking at. And I know for me, with Addie, my daughter, only being five years old, I have to explain the context of some of these pictures. For instance, here's a picture of me when I was six years old. I was, I was in kindergarten, and I had my little army outfit on, and uh, outside swinging. There's fall leaves, you could tell it was fall. It was around my birthday, which is in October. But you know, there's also pictures that that sometimes we may not care to look at maybe some good memories like aunt denise she's a great great aunt i love denise but she's been through th three divorces now the guy that she's with is abusive she really has a hard way to go there's cousin robert Cousin Robert came around a lot and would, would always um, laugh and joke, and he was the life of the party. He got involved in drugs a few years back, wound up in prison. He's still in prison right now. There's Shelly. Shelly is really cool, except she just up and ditched the family. She left years ago. Nobody's heard from her. The only th thing that we have heard is that she's in Florida, she's addicted to drugs, and she's living on the streets. You know, sometimes we have family members that maybe we're ashamed of. We consider black sheep. I know I myself was a black sheep. Um, I was one of the black sheep of my family being addicted to drugs and living a life of crime and whatnot. And maybe there's some bitterness stored in our hearts toward these people. Um, maybe there's even feeling, strong feelings of hatred, things that we need to let go. Uh, but maybe we're just too ashamed to show pictures of these loved ones to, to others. At any rate, the Bible is, is no different when it comes to Jesus, we see that he has a family tree of less than desirable characters. You can find his genealogy in um, the first chapter, chapter of Matthew and in chapter 3 of Luke. And I'm just going to list five of Jesus' relatives. Now bear in mind that this is the Savior of the world. Um, come to redeem sin and reconcile us back to God so that we could stand rightly before a holy God. Now, I want to start out char charitably and uh, be as generous as I can. And so I want to mention King David. King David was one of the great, 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 great grandfathers of Jesus, and I'm sure I'm missing a few great greats in there. But you know what I mean. King David, the Bible says, was a man after God's own heart. The problem is, is that David had some shady things in his life. Not only did he rape Bathsheba, by the way, this is a story most of us are familiar with, and we often refer to it as the adultery of Bathsheba, or David's adultery. But the, but the Hebrew word used there was that they, he had his servants take her by force. He stayed back from battle one night. Any other time, he would have gone out to battle with his soldiers. He stayed back. He was out on the rooftop chilling, looking down at the bathhouse and seeing this beautiful woman bathing. Um, had an eye for her and sent his servants um, to lay hold of her and bring her to him. He goes to bed with her. He gets her pregnant, and so there's a problem. She's married, 
to one of David's uh, leading soldiers, Uriah. And Uriah is faithful and loyal to David. Well, he just got his wife pregnant. And so he has to come up with a plan. And what he does when Uriah comes back from battle, they have another battle they need to go fight. David says, go ahead and stay home. You've been a good soldier. Go ahead and stay home and rest and relax with your wife in hopes that he, Uriah, the husband, may go to bed with his wife. And on down the road, when he realizes she's gaining some weight, if you know what I mean, he'll think back and, and uh, realize that, hey, this is something that happened a while back, and this is the, this is the, the produce of that, um, if you will. So he gives this uh, to Uriah as a present, as something he's offering to him. Stay back from battle, relax. Uriah is faithful and loyal, however, and declines the offer and says, no, I can't do that. You know, I, 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 am, uh, I am loyal to you. I am bound to your service. And so he goes out to battle um, to where David conspires another plan. And this one is carried out, and it was to kill Bathsheba's husband. Um, he, David, had a commanding officer set Uriah at the front lines of battle where the fighting is the fiercest, and he did die. And there was a child conceived on down the road. And But you can read more about that. Let's talk about the second person who trying to be charitable here. King Solomon, the wisest man on all of God's green earth. The Bible says this guy was just a stand-up guy. I mean, God asked him in a dream, what would you like from me? Treasures, riches. Solomon says, I would just like to have some wisdom. I'm stepping into this kingly role. I need some discernment and some wisdom to rule over your people. And God was so thrilled that he had um, asked that. God knows everything anyway, but it moved God's heart, and he gave Solomon this wisdom and treasures and all the rest. You can actually read the book of Proverbs, which um, the majority was from Solomon. King Solomon contributed um, the bulk of the book of Proverbs which are little wise sayings, pithy sayings that uh, are very wise and, and have practical application. The problem with Solomon was, though, he had 300 wives and 600 concubines, so he was sleeping around with a lot of women. And God had warned him a long time ago not to do this because he said, all these women you're marrying and going to bed with, a lot of them were from foreign nations who worshipped foreign gods, and they would eventually lead Solomon's heart away from God. Solomon, being the wisest man on earth, didn't heed that advice, and later on in his life, his heart was led away from God. And the Bible doesn't specify if he ever came back around or not. It doesn't say if he ever repented or not. It, it is what it is. The third person I want to talk about is Rahab, the prostitute. You can read about her in the book of Joshua, the second chapter. God was sending this, uh, Joshua and the Hebrews in, um, in this promised land, and they were to conquer um, the, the peoples living there uh, because they had detestable practices, uh, things that were vile to God. And so Joshua sent out spies into the city of Jericho uh, just to sort of get a lay of the land. They end up at a prostitute's house. How that happened uh, is a topic for another day. Uh, but they did end up at a prostitute's house. Her name was Rahab. And um, the king heard word that they, there were spies in town. So he sent soldiers over to the prostitute's house, and they said, We know you're housing spies here. She said, No, I'm not. I know what you're talking about. They did show up here, but they're gone. If you hurry, you might catch them. She hid them on her roof under some uh, shrubbery or some uh, this, a bunch of leaves and stuff. And so she's not even a Hebrew anyway. Her profession is uh, less than savory, 
But because she acted out on faith, stepped out in faith and helped protect um, these people of God, she was commended for her faith later on in the New Testament, especially the book of Hebrews. Let's talk about Ruth, the fourth person on our list. Um, you can read about her in the book of Ruth. It tells her story. Um, the issue with Ruth is she's a Moabitess. She's from the tribe of Moab, um, who are adversarial toward God. And so she is from a people who worship Shamash, who is associated with the, um, with the mother goddess Ashtar. And part of their worship to these gods involved human sacrifice. I mean, she come from a vile, a vile tribe. I mean, let's be honest. The thing with Ruth was, yeah, she was a Moabitess. The Moabites, by the way, have their origin in the incestuous union of Lot and his daughters. Um, it is what it is. Uh, but, you know, Ruth wanted to get away from those people and she wanted to be a part of the people of God and she was accepted in as such. Uh, the fifth person, and the last person I'm going to talk about briefly, is King Manasseh. King Manasseh, the Bible says, did more evil than all the other nations around him. He led Israel astray. He sacrificed his own son in fire um, to the god Moloch, which they, would, they had this big statue of Moloch, a bronze statue, and they would light a fire around it and get it so hot to where the, the metal, the bronze, was glowing red. And they would somehow have their babies placed into this molten, uh, this searing hot hands of this bronze statue of Moloch. And the babies would just sear and, and burn to death. And the cries of the kids were so loud. And it was so agonizing. They had to have a drum circle constantly beating to try to drown out the cries and screams of the children being burned alive. King Manasseh sacrificed one of his sons in this way. He also was involved in fortune-telling, seeking mediums, consulting the dead. Um, he erected an ashtar pole in God's temple. He did a lot of vile things. And the thing is, are we expected to believe that the Son of God is to come from such a line of misers rapists, murderers, and prostitutes? Is this really who our Savior is from? The good thing is, is that God sees things differently than we do, and He can cause beauty to rise up from ashes. Consider 1 Corinthians um, chapter 1 and verse 26. I'll turn there briefly. And Paul's talking about the gospel and how it's foolish to people. And he says, he says this, God chose what is foolish in the world to shame the wise. God chose what is weak in the world to shame the strong. God chose what is lowly and despised, hated of the world, even the things that are nothing, to bring about nothing, the things that actually are something. And he did this so that no person might boast in the presence of God. He is the source of your life in Christ Jesus, whom God made our righteousness, sanctification, our redemption. Therefore, as it is written, let the one who boasts, boast in the Lord. And so, yes, Jesus' relatives... Um, his family line they have a lot of issues, a lot of a lot of evil, a lot of sin in them. Uh, but we could see that that God can even choose something that people like us would probably reject in order to bring about through the fruition of His plans. Consider Romans eight twenty eight that God works all things, the good, the bad, and the ugly. God works all things together for good for those who love him and for those that are called. Guys, I want to thank you for stopping by today. Stay tuned for episode four 
um, I'll be publishing later this week, will be talking about Mary and her supposed infidelity in our playlist, How the Devil Tried to Steal Christmas. Thanks for stopping by. Merry Christmas.